Okay, um, I always kind of wanted to do a video on the central bank system, or at least, you know, the Federal Reserve, and I thought I should combine it with a quote from Thomas Jefferson, because, you know, Thomas Jefferson was one of my, uh, you know, most favorite presidents, and he had a quote that explained it pretty well, so I figured I'd start off by saying what he said, because he was right, actually. All right. He says here, the central bank is an institution of the most deadly hostility existing against the principles and form of our Constitution. I am an enemy to all banks discounting bills or notes for anything but coin. And this is where it gets really good. If the American people allow private banks to control the issuance of their currency, first by inflation and then by deflation, the banks and corporations that will grow up around them will deprive the people of their property until their children will wake up homeless on the continent their fathers conquered. All right. And uh, he's right. All right. You know, the thing is that, you know, all right, a central bank is, uh, well, particularly in the United States, we have a central bank known as the Federal Reserve. It prints and controls a lot of the monetary systems in the United States. All right. So you got to look at it this way. All right. The Federal Reserve isn't owned by any federal entity. All right. The Federal Reserve is kind of like, it's like a lie. The Federal Reserve is owned by people who are, who are investors in it, you know, people of interest. And the Federal Reserve can do any type of decision they want they can go out there and it, it adjust their own interest rate they can go out there all right and make deals with any banks or private corporations they want and there's no regulation the government can't tell them to stop and the court the government you know the congress can't even really audit them at all all right so there's a lot of you know kind of like well what's really going on in that type of an organization and also um the whole i just once again going back to it calling an organization federal it's not federal i mean that's kind of like lying but the point i want to bring up about a central bank system is that I want to explain a little bit in a simplistic model of how it actually hurts the government. All right, if let's say I was the government, I had a kitchen, right? I go into my kitchen, I said, this kitchen is now my country. All right, I want to, um, you know, put some money for my country in this economy here. So I'm going to go out there. I'm going to go to the private central bank of my kitchen. And I go to the private central bank and I said, listen, central bank, I like to give $100 to circulate throughout my economy. They say, sure. Here's $100 we print out of thin air for you to move around in your economy freely. And I say, that's great. At the end of the year, now they say, well, you know, the thing about a private central bank is that it does one amazingly horrible thing. It takes all the money in an economy and turns it into debt. Now, all money that moves throughout an economy is just strictly debt. It needs to be paid back. It's like a loan. So what happens is they say, hey, you know, we kind of loaned you out $100. So now um, you have to pay the interest. The interest is 10%. So you have to give us 10 extra bucks, $100 for the principal, and then 10 extra bucks because that's the interest agreement. Well, I say, oh boy, you know, that's a mess. Let's say, you know, I can run my economy now for some reason without having any cash in it whatsoever. I'm going to give you back your whole $100 I took out. They say, that's good. You still got to pay us 10 bucks now because you took out a loan. So I say, well, I, I don't really have that money. Could I take out a loan to pay you back? They go, sure. So they say, here, here's another 10 bucks. And then when I pay them back the 10 bucks, you know, I, they say, well, you took out money and I have to pay the interest fee for borrowing that money. That's an extra 10%. Now here's a dollar. And then after I take that dollar, I give it back to them. I have to pay 10 cents. And as you can see, there's no end to this scenario because all money's debt. All right. I'm going to be perpetually paying these people money. All right. And what makes it even worse is that my private central bank in my kitchen now could go out to other kitchens around the world and say, hey, you want a loan? You want some money? Maybe you guys can help your government out, help your economy. I'll give you a, 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 you know some more money here, but it's going to be all right. in you know, the denomination of, you know, uh, JP's kitchen dollars. All right. So what they're going to do is they're going to start printing more money. And when there was only 100 JP kitchen dollars in the economy, it was worth something. Now, if they're going out there and giving, you know, ten hundred dollar loans a week, all of a sudden, now there's a lot more currency flowing through the economy and it's devalued because there's just so much of it. It's just floating around freely. It doesn't really have any value. So what's going to happen is that by my country, my kitchen, this example, trying to pay off its own debt and printing more money, it's devaluating its own currency. All right. And at the same time, the you know private bank going and doing its other things and in turn creating more money, it's also devaluing my currency because the currency is not backed. All right. When you have a fiat dollar, fiat means let it be. All right. So the idea is that its value is whatever it is. If I had a currency that was backed by gold or silver, all right, uh, you know, it, it would still fluctuate in value, per, you know, depending on, you know, the, the demand of gold, gold and silver in the market, but also the amount of dollars which I printed. All right, if I have a currency, you know, that only has like $5, it's going to be valuable than a country that has $5 billion. All right, but um, the idea is that with a fiat dollar, the, the whole backing of your dollar is based on the strength of your economy. The United States, all right, you know, for a long time could have this fiat dollar 
because it was, you know, a very strong a economy. It had a lot of people not just buying things, but building things, providing goods and services. We were actually doing something in the world. Now that the world's gotten so advanced and the United States has kind of fallen on the wayside of its, you know, whole industrialization, there isn't really a much of a need for our country to have, you know, such a strong dollar in the economy anymore. People kind of see it and they go, well, I don't really care too much about American dollars because what's its value in the world? If I had a country that was building everything and had all the raw materials, it's, it could have a fiat currency because it means something. If my country's basically just a, you know, a, a purchaser of goods and it didn't even purchase that much, then its currency is pretty much useless. All right, but um, what I was getting at is that uh, the Federal Reserve, all right, is continuing to um, you know inflate our dollar because we have these big bank bailouts. We have you know bailouts for corporations. We have money going to the government to keep it afloat. We're constantly printing more money to pay our debt. And in turn doing so, we're basically, you know, making our currency more and more worthless. It's inflated. It's devalued. All right. Now, for a long time, that's what people in school taught me. And, you know, that's what I heard in the media. And I said, what the hell is deflation? What's deflation have to do with this? What does that mean? You know, you think deflation, there's less of something. Maybe it goes up in value. But what Thomas Jefferson was saying is that, your, your, your government, all right, would constantly be giving out these loans, uh, basically creating money out of thin air and making a lot of institutions dependent on free government money, which would become very wealthy and continue to take from people who, you know, are trying to live an average life. And when the government decides, oh, crap, time now to pay back our loans and all the bills we have, they're going to take all the money that was in the economy printed and they're going to try giving it all back to not just pay back the principal, but pay back the endless, endless interest, all right, on all their, you know, debt created money. That there's virtually going to, there's basically going to be no money left in the economy. So first off the bat, you inflated all the currency now by printing so much of it and trying to pay off all these bad debts. And then when you honestly tried paying back all the all debts, now there's just no money moving through the throughout the economy. All the cash has now been given to the banks and the central banks. So now you don't have any money in your economy. So now you have deflation. So maybe it costs a thousand dollars for a loaf of bread, and you would think. Maybe there'll be a lot of money in the streets you could just pick up and use. But no, now there may be only like, you know, like a hundred bucks in your town because the currency's all gone. So now you can't even get the money, which is practically worthless to pay for bills. And once again, because of such things, all right, people will you know, wake up homeless because besides the cost of everything getting so out of whack, they can't afford it. Now they have the issue of even trying to find money, even if they're earning it. So, all right, that's my little spiel on that. All right, thanks for watching and take care.